Amen. Amen. While you're still standing, let me read Romans 1 and uh, 1 and 7. Romans 1 and 7. In the book of Romans, the first chapter, verses 1 and 7, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, uh, separated unto the gospel of God. Uh, to all the be and to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be a saint, grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I, I actually had uh, uh, woke up this morning and I've studied the book of Romans in order to preach for this text today. And in this text today in the book of Romans, I wanted to talk about Romans, the 12th chapter. And as I was preaching in a nine o'clock section, I realized that it would probably be better if I just go ahead on and start a series in the book of Romans. So if you watch the nine o'clock session, you will actually see that I actually focused on Romans, the actual 12th verse, and I walked them up to the series. And after that, I said, you know what? If I 11 o'clock service, I will actually start a series on the book of Romans. In Romans chapter 1, in the book of Romans, and Romans actually is a great book. I've actually, uh, as I told him this morning, in the book of Romans, and Pastor Al, you would probably re re relate to this, you and Pastor Snotty, when we prepare for a sermon, we would take a text, and then we would woke up to the text, we would dig into the text to be able to find nuggets for the text. And But in this particular study, what I did was, I actually started the book of Romans in chapter 1 and I woke myself up to chapter 12 in order to preach. And then as I did that, I actually had I did some notes and as doing that. So I want to actually take my time and teach this morning in Romans, the uh, chapter 1. And one of the key verses for Romans that I like, uh, if you would bring me that white mic, this one, keep going out. And I'll talk loud for just a moment. Uh, in chapter 1, uh, Romans, Paul talks about, and this is the main theme of Romans in the book of Romans, is the main verse for those that are taking notes, those that are following along in Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse number 13 is the number one verse for what I consider to be the book of Romans. In Romans the first chapter verse number 16, Paul writes this in, uh, in when Paul writes this in Romans, uh, just turn me up on this one for a moment, and then in the way Paul writes in the book of Romans chapter 1, Paul says this, and I think this is the key verse. Somebody say our key verse. And you know, the devil, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So we rebuke the devil and know that God, some, somebody shout, say, I got the victory. Come on, shout, tell yourself, I got the victory. And now, 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 in the book of Romans, Paul writes in Romans, helps us. And the key main theme of the book of Romans is in Romans 1 and 16. Romans 1 and 16. The main theme of the book of Romans is the righteousness of God is available to everyone that comes to Christ through faith. You are not saved by your works, but you are saved by the faith of God. That's why Romans says it best in Romans 1 and Romans 10. It says that if thou confess with thy mouth and believe with thy heart that God was raised from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. It was not just for the Jews, it was also for the Gentiles. So Paul begins to write to remind us that we are saved by justification through the faith of God. Somebody shout faith. faith. Somebody shout faith. faith. Okay, so Paul says in Romans 1 to 16, for Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed of what Jesus done for me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is power, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe to the Jews and also to the Greek. And so what Paul says, and I told you on last Sunday in Matthew chapter 1 verses 21 and 23, Jesus says that I came in order to for salvation to save the sinner. Is there any sinner here today that can thank God for God's salvation? And the reason that Jesus came was for the salvation for you and I. Somebody shout faith. And so listen, I want to help us to share this with us. So that's why it is so important to realize that we are saved by God's grace. You're not saved because of your work. You can work 24-7 and that's not going to get you saved. Some of you say, well, I've been good all my life. Well, I want to tell you, just because you've been good all your life don't mean that you're saved. Because I'm going to tell you, I thank God for his amazing grace. Is there anybody here that can thank God for his grace? You know, because sometimes, sometimes people say, i done this, i done that, i done this. And they feel like because of all the stuff that they've done, that they're saved, they're going to get to heaven. But I'm going to tell you, there's some good people going to hell. Come on, talk to me. Yeah, listen, if you think that all you got to do to be good, no. You got to have faith to 
receive what Jesus done. So this is what he says. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It says that not to, and not only to him of the Jews first, but also to the Greek. Looking at the structure of Romans 1 through 8, and I'm going to teach in Romans 1 in just a moment, a great deal probably with explaining the great message. In, in chapter 1, Paul offers a brief summary of the gospel message. Jesus Christ is the focus of the gospel. What good is the gospel if there's no Christ? What good is Christmas if there's no Christ? And I know, listen, you maybe didn't get the gift that you wanted underneath the tree. You maybe spent money that you did not have. So now you're going to try all year to pay for what you did. God, and you know what? 99% of the gifts that you got for the people, they don't like anyway. And you really don't like them. So I'm here to tell you that the gospel is all about the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is there any safe folks in the house? that can thank God. So I'm so happy for the gift of faith that God has given me because if we study the book and we see the book, because I'm going to teach it in a series whether you like it or not, so get ready for the book of Romans because the greatest gift that God has given us is the gift of eternal life, the gift of salvation. And because of the gift of salvation, when I woke up this morning, I was happy. I was so happy this morning because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Is there anybody got the strength of the joy of the Lord? When you wake up in the morning, the joy of the Lord ought to be your strength. Paul reminds us he's qualified to proclaim the gospel. Well, I know you're saying, well, who is this Paul that, you got, that I get so excited about? You know why I get so excited about Paul? Because Paul reminds me of my life. Paul reminds me that I once was on the road to Damascus. Damascus, and while I was on the road to Damascus, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Is there anybody that had an encounter with Jesus Christ? And I know, I know, Paul thought that all that he was doing was good, but Jesus knocked him off his high horse. I don't know about you, but it's something when God will knock you off of your horse to let you know that he is in control. Somebody ought to shout, thank God for your Damascus experience. See, I, I wasn't always in church. I ain't always been good. I ain't always been focused on doing the right thing. But the good news is, is that God saw me where I was at to help me get to where I need to be. And I want to tell you, even though I carry the title of pastor, I still yet have some struggles. I still yet have some challenges. I'm, I'm a work in progress. Is there anybody that can testify that you are a work in progress? Come on, tell you, listen, listen, this is amazing. This text is amazing. And I tell you, the key verse, and I ain't going to preach on it today because I want to preach on verse 1 and 7, but the key verse is, I love what he says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, for to the Jews and to also the Greek. I don't know about you, but I thank God for God's grace. I thank God for the power of the preaching of the cross. I thank God for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Somebody ought to shout, thank God for the gospel. Because if it was not for the gospel, we would not be here today. But because of the gospel, we can thank God. Now, I was going to tell you who Paul was, but I got to slow down. Paul was also known, a.k.a. Saul. Now, who was your name? What did they call you outside of the church? What was your name before you got saved? Uh, so before he got saved, his name was Saul. He was on the road to Damascus. He had a letter, and he got it, and he was going to persecute the Christians, but God knocked him off his high horse and sent him and blinded him. I don't know about you, but thank God for his amazing grace that saved a sinner like me. I thank God that he was able to blind me in order to see, and because of God's grace, I can see that God's got favor on each and every one of y'all. Is there anybody that can thank God for favor? Anybody can thank God for grace and mercy? And so here Saul was. He was named Saul. He has this encounter with God. God changes his whole life. And when God changes his life, he allows him to come one way and go another way. He left him there in order for him to realize that, Paul, out of all the good that you think you're doing, you ain't doing it my way. Let me tell you something. You can be doing stuff your own way, thinking that you're doing it right. And then also, let me
let me tell you something. You ought to stop judging people for the outer appearance and start looking at the inner appearance because God doesn't look at the outer appearance. God looks at the inner appearance. You can dress up, you can dress down, but God is checking out the heart. And that's why he says to them, he says, many of them worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Is there any worshipers in the house today? Any worshipers in the house today? So here we are, here we are. And I want to tell you this, I want to tell you this before I get too far. All of us need the gospel. All of us need the gospel. You know, and, and this is not the uh, text today, but in Romans it tells us for all have sinned and come short of the glory. In Romans it tells us that there's none righteous, no, not one. So I want to tell you, tell yourself, say, I ain't righteous. Tell yourself, we've all have sinned. Every one of us in here have sinned and fallen short of the glory. But the good news is I don't have to stay there. You know what Romans 6 says? Romans 6 says, shall, if I'm justified by faith, shall I continue in sin? Certainly not. Because you know what the word says. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. But the reason we continue to fail is because we continue to try in our own strength. Because you know what Paul says? When I would do good, I'm just talking about the text today. Paul says, when I would do good, evil is present. The things that I should do, I, sh I find myself not doing. And the things I should not do, I find myself doing. Are oh, y'all too safe for me this morning? Because I know, I know, I know God is good. Somebody shout, God is good. And so, so, so it reminds me of here Paul is, here Paul is. And I'm glad that I ain't telling y'all chapter 12, because then I would have to rewind and go all the way back. So can I start with you at Romans chapter 1? In Romans chapter 1, here Paul says, I am, here Paul says, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. Can I tell you that all of us has been called? You have been picked out to be called on. Somebody shout, I'm called on. And look what Paul says. Paul does not get focused on his title because the title gets us nowhere, but a testimony gets us over. Paul says, for I, Paul, a servant. Somebody shout, I'm just a servant. In, in his epistle to Romans, Paul said he was called to be an apostle, Romans 1. He was summoned by an apostle. The one sent, apostle is one sent by Jesus for a specific purpose or a special purpose. Do you know that you have a purpose that God called you for a purpose? You were not just called to wake up every day to go through life. You were called with a purpose. Somebody shout purpose. Somebody tell yourself, say, I have a purpose. Somebody shout, I have a destiny and a purpose. Now, I know nobody else may see your purpose, but God has given you a purpose. Somebody shout, purpose. The purpose involved the gospel, which Paul was sent to proclaim to the nation. Do you know that many times we think that it's all about just us and our circle, but God really saved your life for others to see. It's amazing what God can do. You know where you're at today when you run into some of your friends and they say, I cannot believe how far God has brought you. I can't believe where you're at today because they did not expect you to be blessed the way that you are blessed. They expected you to be down, but look at where you're at today. Somebody shout, I'm, per I'm in purpose and I'm blessed. I'll tell yourself underneath your mask, say, I'm blessed. Say, I am so blessed in spite of all that I've been through, I'm blessed. And so God tells Paul, Paul, not only are you a servant, but you are to be a messenger to take the gospel to many nations. And so he says to him, not only to that, you look at it and it says in verse Romans 1, by whom we have received grace in his apostleship for the obedience of the faith among all nations. Right there, verse number 5, say all nations. For, now listen, for his name, he says, Paul, you are to do that for, for your name. All Christians, likewise, have the calling. As you're sitting here under my voice today, and those that are tuning in to social media, you have a calling from God to be a servant of God. And let me tell you something. God don't need no lazy servants. And the problem, can I, can I come on and be real today? The problem with the church is, is you're saying no one else is doing it, so nothing is getting done. Well, you don't have to worry about what someone else is doing. You need to do what God called you to do. And if you do what God called you to do in spite of what everyone else is doing, because when you stand before God, God's not going to ask you what someone else is doing. He's going to give you a reward based on what you're doing. So can I ask you as a servant, if everybody was serving like you, what would the church
church be like? Huh? It, 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 now, now, I, now, trust me, I understand this, and I understand this, and I want you to hear me clear, because I don't want you to go misquote this. I, I want you to hear me clear. Hear me very clear. Now, if you stay home because of COVID, that's great. But don't tell me that you're going to go to work, but you can't come to church. No, 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 hear me. You can go to the supermarket. You can go uh, on all the other activities. Now, the, the, you can get just as much space in the church as you can on your job. Come on, talk to me. Now, now, now listen, it's, I, I, I practice safety. I, I know what COVID is, but I need Jesus. I, I need Jesus in my life. Now understand this. Now, 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 now hear me. Hear me now. What I'm saying is, is if you can go everywhere else, but then you can't come to church, then something is wrong. That's all I'm saying. I, that's all I'm saying. Because when I walk out of here, I got my mask on. When I walk out of here, I got my bottle of hand sanitizer that Keisha gave me. Yeah. When I walk out of here, I wash my hands. But but, but I get up in the morning. I go to work. I go to Walmart. I go to this store, that store. I don't let it stop me. But now as a saint, saint of mine, filled with the Holy Ghost believer, why am I going to run from God instead of running to God? Because if I die, I know where I'm going to be. But I'm still going to be safe. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. So Paul, look what Paul said. Because, li listen, listen, as Christians likewise have their calling, we are the call by Jesus, uh, called of Jesus Christ. Look at Romans 1 and 6. Among whom ye also the call of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, I'm called of Jesus Christ. Boy, you got some power that you didn't even know you had. You got some authority that you didn't even know you had. Look what Romans, Romans 1 and 7 says. To all that is in Rome, beloved of God, called to be a saint. Somebody shout, I'm a saint. You ain't an ain't, you're a saint. So stop acting like an ain't because you are a saint. Somebody shout, I'm a saint. Somebody shout, I'm a saint. Oh, you ought to feel good about that. Somebody shout, I am a saint. Now, now you've been called. The term saint, the term saint is frequently misunderstood and misapplied. One might get the wrong impression of what Paul is saying. A prior understanding is important, serving as a motivational for proper conduct. So let us ask the first question. I'm glad that you asked. I see it all over your face. What is a saint? What is a saint? Well, I'm glad you asked. One set apart, consecrated, holy one, used of God. The word saint means set apart, consecrated. All believers are called to be a saint. So would you tell yourself, say, I am called to be a saint. A believer belonging exclusively to God, the saints are the church, people called out of the world to be God's own people. Do you know that you've been bought with the price? Do you know that Jesus died for you and I? Set apart for God to be as it was exclusive. Here's the appearance. It is very important to know that you are a saint. It is very important to know that you got power. It is very important to know that you got angels encamped around you. It is very important for you to know that if God be for you, he's more than a whole world against you. It is so important for you to know that you are to walk by faith and not by sight. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it applies to all Christians. Somebody shout, I am a saint. God has called you. Listen, I know, listen, I don't care what your past is. I don't care what you've been going through. I want to tell you that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Somebody shout, I'm a saint. Somebody shout, I got the victory. The word means set apart. Applies to all Christians. Summarize what the source says. A saint is a Christian, a member of the body of Christ. Somebody shout, I'm in the body of Christ. Now, as such, Christians are considered by God to be set apart, holy, uh, consecrated for his purpose. Say, I'm consecrated for God's purpose. Amen. Tell yourself, say, self, God is good. Addressing those in various congregations. Let's look at Romans 7. Hey, DJ, the baby, if the baby walks around, it's not going to distract me. It can be okay. I promise you. It'll be okay. You can let her, you can let her teach because the Bible, said, the Bible says train up a child in the way it should go when it's old. Amen? And I, I understand. I had kids. When I had kids, my kids would act up in church. 
My kids would walk around and it's okay. So Tommy just got to know that it's okay. Because as parents, we feel embarrassed. But I ain't embarrassed because y'all kids act up too. I had to keep, you know, you know, I was the pastor. I had to keep my kids from the minister of music kids. Then I had to keep them from the deacon kids. Come on, y'all talk to me. Uh, amen. See, that's, that's what we got to do. That's what we can do. We train. We love each other. We wrap arms around each other. We help each other. That's what it's about. A quick say, say saint. And that's what, that's what Paul was writing when he's writing to the book of Romans. He was helping them to be able to identify the things that needed to help them to continue to be what Christ has called us to be. And look what he says in Romans 1 and 7. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be a saint, grace to be you, grace uh, to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Here Paul was, he was addressing those in the congregation, describing the subject in brotherly love. Somebody shout brotherly love. Somebody shout, but a saint is not some super spiritual Christian. Because sometimes we think we got to have super strength. Listen, where we're weak, that is where God is strong. Somebody shout, I'm so happy to know that I can be weak. Now, 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 dead and having to live a long life, who is uh, one of those that believe that, you know what, you got to get everything right. But I'm here to tell you, man, I truly thank God because the word says that Paul said a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle, the life of a saint. Somebody shout the life of a saint. Saints should live in a manner worthy of the call. We should live worthy of the call. Walking in unity. That's what a saint does. A saint walks in unity. You know what? I may, I may not like something that you do, but I'm going to love you anyway. I may not agree with you, but you're still yet my brother and sister in Christ. We may have a falling out one minute, but the next minute I'm going to love on you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to encourage you. That's what a saint does. A saint walks in the truth. You may not like it, but I'm going to tell you how it is, whether you like it or not, because that is truth. That is so important. That Somebody shout, that is important. And we're to walk in love. Listen, we can, do, we can walk in love. And when we walk in love, we may not always have to agree, but we can do it in love. You know, I used to hate this when I was getting a whooping growing up. They would say, it hurt me more than hurt you. I don't know how that was. You know, is there anybody that can testify? You know, you getting a whooping and they're talking about it's hurting you, but it's hurting them worse than you. Well, no, you didn't get no licks. I'm the one that's leaving with abuses and you hit me talking about it's hurting you. I don't know if that's love or not. Y'all heard that. You know, and walking in the light, walking in, as a saint, we're to walk in the light. As a saint, we're not to be stumbling blocks of someone else. As a saint, we're to be able to be light to a dying world. You know, there's so much hatred outside the church. They don't, there's no room for hatred in the church. The world is already acting up. There's no, there's no room for hatred in our life. As saints of God, we are to be the light of the world. Well, not the verse said we ought to be salt of the world. We ought to be able to let people know somebody shout salt of the world. Somebody shout light of the world. And then we ought to have the wisdom. Have the wisdom. Somebody shout. Saints should avoid things not befitting the call. In the call that God has called us to do. God has called us to do that. You know, there's things in our life that sometimes, you know, that as un unsaved folks that we do. But now that we're saved, we ought to try to be better. You know, I'll tell you, I'm not perfect, but each day I wake up, I'm trying to at least be better. You know, as I try, that's all I can do is try. Somebody shout, I'm trying. That's all you can do is try to be better. As a saint of God, you can try to be better, and God will help you to be better. Saints strive to live the way that God wants you to live. God wants you to live. They don't always live up to their calling, but we can at least try to live up to the calling of God. You know, I'm telling you, I, tell them, I, I love my children. I, I don't care what they do. I love my children. Now, I can talk about them, but you better not talk about them. Yeah, they're my kids. Yeah, because remember, I'm under construction. Yeah. So, but no, and, that, and but you know what? That's the way God is with us. You know, that's the way saints ought to be. You, God loves you so much. You know what? God can talk about you, but no one else better not talk about you to God. God loves you. God knows exactly where you. Are. Somebody shout! Thank God, I'm a saint. No, you are a saint. Listen, you have your struggles, you have your challenges, you have your ups and downs. But guess what? Saints should be filled with the knowledge of God. We ought to know that, you know what, no matter what you're going through, you ought to be able to know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You ought to know that the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. You ought to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think. You ought to be able to know that you got the whole armor of God on to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. As a saint, you ought to know the word of God. Somebody shout the word of God. 
as a saint, you ought to be able to put this word in you, hide it in your heart so you might not sin against God. As a saint, you ought to be able to call on the name of Jesus to know that you can look to the hills from which cometh your help because all of your help cometh from the Lord. As a saint, you ought to know that surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You ought to have the knowledge of God. Somebody shout the knowledge of God. As a saint of God, you ought to have the word of God in your heart. When you got the word of God in your heart, that's the good news to know. Listen, I'm telling you. Listen, I told them uh, that many people are celebrating Christmas just on one day, but I celebrate Christmas every day. Why? Because I know that Christmas is every day of the year. Somebody shout, I got Christmas every day of the year. Involve knowledge in the Bible. Accomplished by the wisdom and understanding. Somebody, saints are to walk worthy of the call. Somebody tell yourself, say, I'm walking worthy of the call. God has called you. Listen, God has called you out of the former things into the present things. That's why he says, forgetting those things that are behind and press towards the mark of the higher calling. Somebody shout, I'm going higher. Listen, can I prophesy to somebody real quick? 2022 is going to be your best year. Man, listen, listen, God did not bring you this far to leave you. God knows what you're trying to accomplish. I'm being confident of this one thing, that that he started, he shall complete it. Man, let me tell you something, all you got to do is have faith to believe it. Anybody got faith to believe it? You're justified by faith. You've been redeemed by faith. You've been set or cursed from the enemy by faith. You've been saved by faith. You've been washed in the blood of Jesus by faith. Your family's saved. You are saved. Victory belongs to you. Somebody shout, victory belongs to you. Victory belongs. You got to receive the victory. You got to know that. I'm, I, when you got faith to believe it, I speak over my kids' life. I speak over my grandkids' life. I speak over your life. I speak over the community because God is getting ready to do greater things. The farmer should be greater than the latter. Somebody shout, I got the victory. You just got to walk into it. Our behavior should pro progress and reflect on the one who we swear. We know people used to wear braces called what, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Can I ask you, what would you do? What are you doing? You're a servant. Somebody shout, I'm a servant. We're trying to figure out what Jesus is doing. What does Jesus call you to do? Has he, you listen, you got to be a servant. You got to be a servant. Somebody shout, servant. Saints are fully pleasing him. We got to continue to strive to please God. We got to do what God called us to do by being fruitful in every good work. We got to be able to do that by increasing in the knowledge of God. Listen, some people are saying, you know what? How do I get to where I need to be? What is the will of God? Listen, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The same way you listen to all that music is the same way you all listen to the word of God. When I'm going down the street in my truck, I put on the word of God, and I'm telling you, the word of God lifts me. The word of God moves me. The word of God helps me. Saints ought to be strengthened with the might of God. Listen, you ought to be able to tell yourself, and I know all of us in here is, 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 is at least been saved over a year, except maybe one or two, and then God is working on some of us. But all of us be, ought to be able to say, I know how to look to the hills in which cometh my help. All of us will be able to say, I can call on the name of Jesus. We ought to be strengthened according to God's glorious power. Somebody shout power. power. Somebody shout power. power. For all.